Hi everyone, I'm Natalie Steele with Mabel Products Corporation. Um, today we're going to have we're going to learn how to make cubes in accordance with ASTM C109, which is the standard test method for compressive strength of hydraulic cement mortars using two-inch cube specimens. All right, so first we're going to go over the supplies we need. Um, so as you can see, we've got our cube mold here. Um, we've got our mold release agent. I'm using WD-40. Uh, we've got our paper towels for wrapping our cubes once we demold them. We've got our tamping stick for tapping the mortar into the cubes. Um, we have a margin trowel. Uh, we have plastic wrap for wrapping our cubes. Um, a plastic bag for storing our cubes for shipment. A permanent marker for marking them. Um, and we also have our PPE as well, so I'm going to be wearing gloves, safety glasses, and a dust mask while I'm mixing. Okay? So um, we always recommend brass or stainless steel cube molds. Um, there are other cube molds available. There are plastic cube molds like this. There are, we've also received individual plastic cube molds before as well. Um, we prefer the stainless steel or brass cube molds because the dimensions stay precise. Um, you can actually end up warping the dimensions in both of these different types of plastic molds. And a big key in getting the highest breaks possible is to have very precise dimensions. So that's why we always recommend either a brass or stainless steel cube mold. Okay? Okay, so first we're gonna start up by, by mixing our material. I've got five pounds of ML72 here, um, and our mixing instructions for our 65 pound bags is 1.2 gallons of water per bag. Um, so I've measured up the appropriate amount of water for five pounds of water. Um, and the key with uh, mixing up for cubes is to use as little water as possible. Um, so we might end up using a little less than what I've measured out um, because we want the material to be a little more stiff than it normally would when we're pumping it through our pump, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and add this and we'll mix it up. So I'm going to leave a little bit of water in my cup. Okay. And we'll start with that. than we normally would when we're pumping the mortar. And that's about the consistency we want for making cubes, okay? Okay, so we're ready to make um, our mortar cubes. So first things first, we're gonna spray it with our mold release agent. And then we're gonna wipe it down. Wipe off any excess mold release agent. and we're ready to fill. Okay, so we're gonna start by filling each of our cube molds halfway, and then we're gonna tamp them down, okay? I've got those about 50% full. All right, and the first thing I do is I slam my cube mold down onto the um, table so I can get my mortar very good and compacted. But for the sake of saving our ears, we're just gonna use the tamping stick for now. So um, after I've slammed my material onto the table a few times to compact it down, I'm then gonna use my tamping stick. And the way that works is I'm gonna tamp four this way, four back the other way. Then I'm gonna turn it 45 degrees and do the same thing, four this way and four that way. I'm gonna do that two times, okay? Now I'm gonna turn it. And turn it again. We do that for all three cubes. Now 
now you can see we've got those nice and compacted in there. And now we're going to continue on with filling the rest of the mold. And um, we want to make these a little overfilled at the top because we're going to slam them down and tamp down that material into the mold. Do my tamping again. Normally I would slam my mold down on the table first, but we're going to move on to the tamping. See, I've got that tamped down. And once again, I would continue um, slamming this down on the table to get them nice and compact. All right, but for now, we're gonna move on to troweling off the excess mortar on top. And the way we do that is we take our margin trowel and we're gonna hold it about at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna scrape along the top of the mold. And as you can see, as I'm moving my trowel over the cubes so that it's pushing it up on the other side. So we're going to go back over it again, the same angle. Go the opposite way. Now I've got a little bit of material still bulging out, so I'm going to take it at more of a 90 degree angle, and I'm just going to do one more this way, and I'm going to do one more straight this way, same angle. As you can see, we've got our uh, mold nice and struck off on the top, okay? Okay, so now it's time to wrap our mold so that they can set overnight for 24 hours, okay? And we just use our plastic wrap. I've already got a couple pieces laid out here. So what I'm going to do is just make sure I get this wrapped up nice. And we want to be careful that we're not touching the top of the mold so that we can keep that top nice and struck off evenly. Okay? And the goal here is just to get the whole mold covered in plastic wrap. So I've got a little bit of a gap here. I'm going to use a little more plastic wrap to cover that up. So I'm going to go on this side this time. Okay? And now, as you can see, we've got our mold nice and wrapped up, and we're going to let it sit for 24 hours. Okay. okay, so I've just demolded some cubes that have been sitting for 24 hours in their mold. Um, and as you can see, they are very precise in their dimensions. We've got a nice flat top, nice flat sides, nice flat corners. Um, we have very little voids in our material. And those are the things that are going to give us a really good break, okay? Um, in comparison, I also have a couple of cubes. You can see here, um, there are big voids in here. Not all of my dimensions are good. You see this corner here, it's kind of broken off. Um, these cubes will give us uh, poor breaks in comparison to these cubes, okay? So these are the types of cubes you want to be able to demold, okay? Okay. So now that we've demolded our cubes um, to prepare them for shipment back to Madewell, you're going to, I've wet some paper towels here. Um, so what you're going to want to do is wet a paper towel, cover the cube in the wet paper towel, as well as the rest of them. And these will, this will help keep them moist during transport. And then I'm going to label my bag. And you can also
also add project details or whatever information you want to this, but I'm just going to put ML72. And then I'm going to put my cubes in my plastic bag and seal it up. And these are ready to ship. Now when we ship our uh, cubes, we want to make sure that we package them in a way so that they're nice and protected during transport. Nothing happens to them on their way to our facility. Okay, so we've um, received our cubes back here at Madewell. Um, and once we receive them, we take them out of the bag and take them out of the uh, paper towels and we put them in our container full of lime water and we leave them to cure for the amount of days that you guys need for us to test them out, whether that's 24 hours, seven days, 14 days, or 28 days. So we add these to our container and let them cure until they need to be tested. Okay. So we have our three cubes that have been curing in lime water for 28 days, and these, so these are ready to break now. Um, this is our cube crushing machine here. Uh, so we're just gonna turn this on. And we're gonna put our cube in here. Make sure that's in the center of this mold here. And we're going to start advancing it until it hits the cube. All right, and now you can see we've got an output here. We want this number to stay between 200 and 400 pounds per second. That's the load rate that the ASTM standard calls for. And since we have a slightly older machine, I have a knob that I have to adjust to keep this load rate on point. So you'll see this go up and down. And at 28 days, we typically expect our ML72 to break at around 10,000 PSI. And the way we calculate that is by taking this um, total amount of force and dividing it by the surface area of the cube. So with a two inch by two inch cube, um, we're gonna divide by four. So we basically want this number to go all the way up to 40,000. this number as close to 400 as possible just because that speeds up the test. And once the cube starts to break, we'll see this number start falling drastically. So now we're up above 40,000 PSI. All right, looks like we've broken our cube. All right, so our total was 44,180. And you can see where we've broken our cube. Okay, okay so like I said, we're gonna take this number, which is 44,180, and we're gonna divide it by four. And we have a strength of 11,045 PSI, which is higher than 10,000. That's great at 28 days. All right, and then um, what we would do after this is we would test our other two cubes, and depending on what we get with those results, we're gonna take all three of those results, and then we're gonna take the average of those three. Okay, and that's how you break cubes.